friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, today I wanted to get out here and start harvesting my golden oregano. I was really hoping for a sunny day to do this because I wanted you to see it, uh, how beautiful it is in full sun, but um, I really need to get started on this so I can let it help it to spread more. And if I wait for a sunny day, it may never happen around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of this. I'm not gonna get a lot today, but when it starts getting this tall, I like to prune it back and then and just start using it right away so that it can really spread and make more. My goal is to get it to spread. Let me show you what I got here. I, I made this area here so that the golden oregano can spread clear down to the grass line and around a little bit on the sides. Um, and I have another bunch that I made off of this on the other side, but I'll get to that in a minute. So um, the golden oregano is going to have similar health properties as your regular oregano, but I'm going to assume that it's not, it's not going to be quite as much as you get from your regular oregano because the golden oregano is just a very, very mild taste. It's much sweeter. Um, it has a wonderful aroma and it tastes great fresh and sour. So, so you know how your regular oregano, if you eat it fresh, it's super hot, it just burns. This is not like that at all. It has that light oregano flavor, but without any of the hot to it. And so it makes a very wonderful culinary thing to add to your salads. And it also, I dehydrated some last year and I was trying it in some dishes and it was excellent. So I'm really hoping to get a lot this year. Um, so as you can see, the oregano, as it get this particular plant, this particular oregano, the more sun it gets, the lighter in color it gets. So I'm gonna be printing this back and you'll see how much darker it is on the bottom. So I don't know how many plants do that. Typically, the more sun, the darker they get. This is the other way around. And one of the reasons I love this isn't just for its wonderful culinary benefits, um, but it just, it adds this wonderful pop of color to the garden. So, I went to, and, and it spreads like a carpet. And um, it's, it's just gorgeous. I love it so much. So um, I highly recommend growing this. A lot of people grow it only for its beauty but they probably don't even realize how wonderful this is to cook with. So I'm going to get started. Um, I'm going to get my scissors here. I like to cut it because every time I try to pull it, I usually end up pulling some up. So I'm going to cut it back. And you can see down here where I just cut it, how much darker that is. It's still a light color of green. Now, once the sun comes out and is able to hit this, this is going to turn this kind of chartreuse yellowish color or lime green whatever you want to call it i want to prune it way back because i don't like it to get too tall anyway besides this this is another place the slugs like to hide out so i like to keep this pruned back from the pot a little bit so they're discouraged from hiding out in there of course wherever they hide out is a good place for me to find them and gather them up and feed them to the chickens but I wanted you to be able to see this before I pruned it back so you could see the color and the difference. Okay, big difference in color, but there's still a lot there. It's still very thick. So that's gonna grow up some more and I'll harvest it back again. This is just gonna encourage it to really get going. I wanna take you over to my other bunch. Now, this particular batch, for some reason, is much taller than the one over there, even though I'm pretty sure that one gets more sun. This, I just made from a small little start from that original patch over there. I am going to get a lot more than I thought. My colander is almost full. I guess I didn't realize just how thick and tall this was. So this is wonderful. I'm glad that I got started on this today. Now I already have um, lavender leaves, lemon balm, and peppermint drying on my dehydrator. So this was the last thing I had to harvest today. I was doing it 
harvesting it last on purpose, hoping the sun would come out, but it's not going to happen apparently. Okay, I'm going to cut that back just a little bit more just to really get it to thicken out and spread. So same thing here. I'm hoping that it will um, just spread out quite a ways and clear down into the grass here. I got another tiny little pouch over here, but it's just real small, so I'm just going to leave it alone. So that's a pretty good pouch. I got a lot more. I figured I'd only fill this thing halfway full, but um, this is great. I should get enough of golden oregano this year to last me for the whole year. In fact, I still have some dried from last year that I didn't use because I was being very sparing with it because I was trying to get the most out of it as possible. But now I feel like I can use this as liberally as I want because it looks like I'm going to get a lot. All right, so now I have my oregano. I've got it all rinsed and I, I have it sitting on this mat to kind of absorb all the excess water. Now, if you don't have male dogs that like to pee on everything or, um, and, or, you're not using any chemicals on your garden, which I don't, um, you really don't need to rinse your herbs. The only reason I rinse my herbs, I used to not, but because I have a male dog that likes to pee on everything, even though I'm, I'm working on him, you know, he's still kind of a pup, uh, I just to be on the safe side, I like to, um, rinse out all my herbs to make sure I don't have any dog pee on them. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't worry about it because I don't use any kind of chemical fertilizers. Everything I use on my garden is natural. Um, I don't even buy organic fertilizers. I have a few that I bought in the past, but I really, I don't even use them. The only thing I ever buy that I use is the um, bone meal and the blood meal. And even those, I don't, I, I use very sparingly and only in certain places. I'm going to be using my Nesco dehydrator, and I'll link to that below. I've been using the same dehydrator for over 15 years, and it's, uh, it's never done me wrong. I bought a backup just because I want, in case the motor ever goes out in the one, I want the backup, but I bought that like three years ago, and I still haven't used it. But it was great because I bought the whole thing, and then it gave me another four trays to to use. So I'm guessing I'm probably going to need three trays. I brought three trays in. Um, I don't remember how many trays I already have out there on the on the dehydrator full of peppermint. And I know I have three trays of peppermint, a tray of lavender leaves, and then another tray of lemon balm. So that's five. This will give me eight trays. I still have four. That means I still have four more trays I can use up I need to but this is all I'm gonna do today and I set this my herbs at about 115 you can go lower 115 degrees seems to work pretty good I just try to keep a close eye on it and check it every so often now the reason I put my dehydrator even though it's still been really cold out in the greenhouse um, is we have solar we have solar plug-ins in the house but we also have some in the greenhouse which is really great. So if I'm running the electric dehydrator on a hot day, it doesn't matter if it's in the greenhouse. I'm not heating up the inside of my house. I used to set it outside on the table, but it's just safer in the greenhouse because that way if it starts pouring down rain, I don't have to worry about it. And just a great place for it. So I'm going to set this on my dehydrator. And like I said, 115 degrees, it'll take because I because I'm going to have eight trays on there, um, it'll probably take anywhere from four to six hours for everything on there to be fully dehydrated. But what I like to do is go out there and check, and usually the top tray is going to be the one that dries first. And so I try to get that off right away as soon as everything on it is dry and just keep going through. And that way the stuff on the bottom um, can dry faster as well. So that's how I do that with an with that particular dehydrator. So, and I've mentioned this before, it is, I've never used the Excalibur, so I can't say from experience, I know a lot of people love it, but it also is rather expensive. I got the Nesco before I'd ever even heard of the Excalibur, and I'd already been using it for probably a good 10 years by the time I heard of the Excalibur. And I just have seen no need for another one, because I this one's just worked really good for me. 
It's the same thing with my Solivore solar oven. I had never heard of any other kind. I bought it many years ago. It has done very well for me. And even in our area where we don't get a whole lot of sun, I've been I've got just lots of miles of use on my solar oven and I've been pleased with it. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out, put it on the dehydrator, and when this is done, I'll show you what I do with it. All right, so most of my golden oregano is dry. This is actually two trays I consolidated. Once they got dry enough, I was able to consolidate two trays into one so I could take one tray off. And this tray is dry, I still have one more left. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this. Now, if you watch my stinging nettle vid video, you'll see this isn't any different than what I do with a stinging nettle. I just take my fingers and just sort of crush it up. Um, and if I find any pieces that are still damp or a little too woody in things that I don't wanna use, um, cause I'll be using this right in dinners and gravies and stuff. In fact, I might add a little bit to the stir fry I'm doing tonight, and that's what you see going on over here. I've got some vegetables, some organic green pepper, red cabbage, carrots, and onion. And we had barbecued some steak last night. It was one big steak from that grass-fed beef that I'm always talking about, locally raised. And uh, it was just way too big. Just that one steak was too big for the two of us to eat, and so more than half of it's left. So I've cut it up into little pieces and I'm gonna do a stir fry with the vegetables. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's what's going on over there. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep crumbling this up, looking for any stems or whatever. Sometimes you'll have some stems that aren't gonna fully dry. And those, you know, if you're using it as an herb in your dinners, you don't really like the stems in there. If you're using this to add the teas, it's no big deal. So like when I'm doing peppermint, unless it's, you know, if it's a woody piece, I just leave it in there. It's no big deal because I'm just using it in a tea. And you can crush it up just as fine as you want it. It's totally up to you. I'm actually doing this a little finer than I usually do. Here's my golden oregano from last year. And I wish... Again, this is another one of those times I wish I had smell vision I wish you could smell how amazing the aroma of this is, even once it's dehydrated. It just, it's just giving off this really pleasant smell. It's, it's similar to, uh, to your regular oregano, your very hot oregano, but much sweeter. And um, just, wow, just very aromatic. It, it was wonder, it was wonderful just, you know, harvesting it just the smell so obviously I'm going to want to use up the 2016 oregano first and the rest of this what I'll be doing is I'll just keep filling up hopefully I can get at least a couple of pint sized jars filled up this year and that'll definitely last me for um for the rest of the year and once this one is full then um, I'm going to use a regular mouth this time. Then I just use my brake bleeder with the food saver lid attachment and I'll seal it up. And you guys have seen me do that in several other videos. But if you haven't, I'll, I will link to one of those videos where I'm using that uh, food saver with the brake bleeder and um, right at the end of this video so you can check that out. So there you have it. There's my golden oregano and me harvesting and drying it. Now, Feel free, if you've never used golden oregano to cook with before and you decide you're going to grow it, feel free to just try it in anything. I per personally think it will go well with just about any dinner. It will certainly go good in anything you would have oregano in, like any kind of Italian dish, but because it is a little bit different flavor, a little more mild, a little more sweet, I think it's a little more versatile. So try it in all kinds of things i'm not i don't limit myself to one thing if, if if one herb is supposed to be specifically for french food and another specifically for italian and another specifically for mexican food i don't limit to limit it to that i might use those frequently in those dishes but i experiment i try you know cross you know switching things up and trying different things and you may be surprised at what you find 
So just experiment, people. Even start with small amounts and just see what you think. Like I did with the macaroni and cheese when I was using the curry. And I tell you, I used to not really like curry, so I was surprised at how much I liked the flavor of the curry and the paprika. It really turned out quite amazing. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and be watching because I will have more like this coming up as I harvesting more stuff from the garden that might be a little unconventional type things you'll see me harvest and dry and use. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.